The Batmobile is so cool. Yeah. Also, I got to, I test drove it without knowing, I was supposed to be just going for a stunt driving lesson and then this truck, a, we're like in the middle of nowhere on this, uh, on a test driving, or like a, uh, an airfield or something in the middle of nowhere, like in, in outskirts of London somewhere, there's no one around. And then this truck turns up and it's kind of, I mean, it really felt like a military operation. Yeah. No one told me the Batmobile was turning up and they like pour out and it's at this, oh God, it's so cool. dusk. It was so That's, cool. We had to do it at night because no one could take photos of it. And then I, like, do you want to drive it around? And like, I think they thought I could just drive it for like 10 meters. Yeah. And I just immediately you drove oh straight my God. off it, flooring it, trying to skid in the, it. Oh my but, God, the panic. The panic yeah. they must have had. It's so loud as well. I mean, it's it is so loud. Yeah, yeah. You, like, the fact was... that you are doing the interview together, because I think that your two characters are the uh, two sides of the same medal. They want both do the difference in really completely different waves, of course. And uh, so do you think that actually the villains is in the eyes of who, who is looking, mm. like watching the movie? Well, yeah, I like what you're saying. And I like that the that there is, uh, it's a superhero film where the, it's less black and white in terms of just good versus bad and, and the, the heroes aren't just protecting the status quo, which I think is is really interesting. I do think that the film has a pretty clear point of view in the end. Um, so, uh, but uh, un un unfortunately in some ways we are powerful enough in our minds to see what we want to see as well in, in the world sometimes. Um, but I, I, I do think it I like what the film is is saying, but in, in, in the end, it's a great it's a great question, um, and I I think as we consider what is heroic and what is villainous um, in the film, yes, the lines are blurred between the causes, but not clearly between um, the the action. Uh, that's taken as uh, in, in order to try to realize the cause. And perhaps the difference is, and it's something that I think we can relate to outside of the cinema, is it seems the hero isn't fighting for himself. He's fighting for the collective. Whereas the villain perhaps is a little more self-centered or a lot more self-centered and doesn't recognize a connection to um, what is greater than him, and that being the community. And so um, perhaps the answer uh, lies somewhere in there. And certainly um, uh, Gordon, I think, recognizes that. Batman watched the movie. Um, but um, there's a sense that, yes, I recognize that there's corruption here. I recognize there is decay here. Um, how do we overcome it for the general welfare of all? Um, and uh, it's a it's a great question. Watching this movie really inspired me, and uh, I was thinking that probably when we wear mask or costume, uh, the things that actually free ourselves to be our real self. If you think and look closely. Every character in the movie wears a mask or a costume, even your character. So what do you think about this aspect? I, I think you're absolutely right. And, um, you know, Alfred's, Alfred's mask is one of kind of duty and pride and uh, a, an association with a dynasty that is um, now becoming uh, abhorrent to, to Bruce who is fighting against that. And I think that's, that's it, it, you know, in order for, for Alfred to continue, he, he has rules and structure and, and he is precise. Uh, he, you know, he knows his job. He comes from the military training. He, you know, it's, he's quite, he's not um, fluid in terms of the way that he can express emotion. Um, but nevertheless, he can, he's looking at, at, at his, the person that he's supposed to be protecting uh, destroy themselves, uh, you know, and physically and, and psychologically. And so, so, but he's kind of, in a way, 
impotent and I and I unable to 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 fill the gap and and uh, you know be the father figure that he needs to be for 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 Bruce who is kind of completely rejecting him. So it's it's a very interesting. I mean, I, I totally agree with you because the mask that he is wearing is now trying to shut Alfred out, and and Alfred's um, you know version of the mask is is holding on to it is makes him uptight in a way read that frank miller inspiration was like from the godfather to define you know the villains in uh, in the comics but i'm asking yeah. you what did you bring to your character in order to not turn him into a cliche of a mobster i don't know i don't know if i did or didn't turn him into a cliche i have no idea i mean literally every time you go to work you just take what's on the page and you you have your conversations with your director and you use your imagination and of course i've drawn from you know 30 or 40 years of watching gangster films from jimmy cagney stuff all the way you know original scarface then pacino scarface all the way up to the godfather and and casino and various performances in various films. So you're, you're drawing on it all. I mean, I was consciously or unconsciously drawing on, as you always do, everything you've seen and everything you've experienced. Um, but if the writing's original and if, if, you know, the conversations with your director are clearly angling towards some kind of intention, some kind of narrative intention, which Matt was very clear. Matt Reeves, the director, writer, was very clear on how he wanted this world to look, how he wanted it to feel and how he wanted the characters to inhabit the world. And then I saw the makeup and it just I had already done some dialect, some some accent work with the dialect coach I work with. And as soon as the makeup went on, everything just started coming out. I just we were improvising and I was moving a particular way and it was it was really like coming out, going into a cocoon, but it was like coming out of a cocoon. Mm. It was like, I just was given, as I said, complete artistic license to just be a kid in a sandbox, really, and just play, you know, it was, it was playtime. It was so much fun. What was important to me in the film was because the Riddler was leaving all of this correspondence at all of these murders and sort of taking down these supposedly legitimate pillars of power, um, that were sort of holding Gotham up. As he was tearing them down, the intent was to describe the corruption in this city, the corruption that had gone back for years, and certainly back 20 years to when uh, Bruce's father was killed. And so for me, Gotham needed to be a character in the film. And so I wanted to make sure that we didn't do a Gotham that was either, because the movie was going to be so grounded, so like um, the Ant Anton first stuff that was done in, in the Burton verse was so cool and really special, but very theatrical. And, you know, Nolan had done a particular take, but at a certain point after sort of Batman Begins sort of defines itself in a very specific way, but in a certain way, he started going off to it sort of more global. And then you would say like, oh, I guess Chicago or maybe parts of Pittsburgh. And I was like, well, what I want to do is I want this to be an American city that you can't identify. I wanted you to feel like it was a place you'd never been, be been to before, but that felt truly gothic and truly American. So we actually chose a number of locations that would not have been used for Batman before because they weren't big cities. We shot in Liverpool and we used the architecture there, the gothic architecture, and then we used CG sort of buildings and stuff. Our amazing production designer, James Chinland, and my amazing, um, from Apes, from the Apes movies that I did, Dan Lemon, our amazing VFX supervisor, they worked to take that real photography and then add in the sort of more modern structures and all of the giant sort of, you know, LED screens and all the stuff that you would see in Times Square so that we could create, I didn't want to shoot sort of, um, Gotham Square in Times Square, because you go, I guess it's New York. I wanted us to have our own. And so we tried to make a signature look so that people would feel like they were seeing this place that felt American, but a place they'd never seen before so they could see it for the very first time in this movie.